in her native village where she was born. Grew up and worked her whole life. As a teacher, she was loved and respected by all. She got married late in life. Perhaps too busy caring for other people's children. Or perhaps she didn't meet her spouse when she was young. When Dasha Maximovna wasn't around yet. Around the age of 40. A foreman from the brigade that. Was laying a new power line through their village. Started courting her. He was taken by the sturdy, educated, and elegant Dasha. And he proposed to her. Without much hesitation, she agreed. Seemingly not deeply in love. Yet she became Alexei's wife in that village. Living in his home and later becoming. The chairman of the collective farm. Soon, a strong and healthy boy named Mischenka was born. Bringing immeasurable happiness. They lived together harmoniously despite challenges. Working diligently in their respective roles. Doing everything honestly for the people and the country. Their son grew up and moved to the city to study and work. Following the expected path of a responsible citizen. Both her husband and her country were lost. In an instant, with the collapse of the Soviet Union. And Alexei passed away. He suffered a stroke while at work. And she couldn't reach the distant hospital in time. In the tough 1990s, as the country faced hardships. Many from the village moved to the city to work, leaving the village behind. The school where Daria Maximovna worked closed down. The local shop shut its doors. And the bus service became infrequent. Now, in her old age, Daria Maximovna remained alone. Her son visited her rarely. But he didn't abandon her. He brought her non-perishable groceries periodically. Canned meat, flour, grains, oil, potatoes, and vegetables. She also had a few chickens in her backyard. Providing fresh eggs. Her son would occasionally help with tasks around the house. Fixing fences or repairing the porch or roof. There was a motorcycle with a sidecar in the shed. A relic from the past when her husband was alive. They used to ride through forests and swamps. Even making trips to the district hospital. Despite her son's suggestions. She held on to the motorcycle. Thinking it might still come in handy. She chuckled, who's going to ask for my driving license in our village? Maybe wild boars. Especially in the woods. But now, without her husband and with limited mobility. It was harder for her to reach the village without a personal vehicle. The bus only went to the neighboring village. And then there was a kilometer or so through the woods on foot. Inside the shed stood the motorcycle with its sidecar. A relic from the past, reminding her of old adventures. Her son had often urged her to sell it, but she insisted, who knows when we might need it. After all, I still remember how to ride. Once, she couldn't make it to the village shop. So a young and agile neighbor, Nadia, helped out. Nadia quickly went around the yards, compiling a list of items needed by the villagers. Daria hopped on her trusty motorcycle, and off they went to the neighboring village. They covered the four-kilometer distance through the woods. On a well-worn path, an old postal route. It wasn't easy, especially during the thaw. But they managed it. The villagers were grateful for her efforts. Thanking the women for sparing them the burden. Of walking to the shop themselves. For Daria Maximovna, these journeys became routine. As long as her health allowed. The village chipped in for the fuel. Understanding that this was their only connection to the outside world. And so, whenever something came up, Daria Maximovna would quickly ride through the woods to the neighboring village. She parked her motorcycle by the road, as close as possible to the shop, with her sidecar brimming with supplies. And this became her lifeline, a way to bridge the gap between her village and civilization. One day, as she returned from another shopping trip, 
Daria decided to park her motorcycle in a more strategic location. The road ahead became treacherous due to the thaw. And she wanted to avoid getting stuck. In her own way, she continued to navigate life's challenges. Showing determination and resilience. Her son would laugh with her. Agreeing with her unique perspective. But it was true, she thought. After all, who would question her driving in their village? Except maybe wild boars. But they were still nowhere to be seen in the woods. And so, Daria Maximovna's motorcycle adventures continued. A small yet significant thread in the fabric of her life. Connecting her with the world beyond her village. As she carried on with unwavering spirit. Quickly foraging for mushrooms on a reconnaissance mission. Her son was supposed to visit. She wanted to treat him to mushroom pie. Even with sour cream. After running through the forest. And collecting a decent amount of robust white mushrooms. Including a few bolides. She decided to take a short break before heading back. Suddenly, something stirred nearby under a moss-covered log. And a small gray wolf cub let out a soft growl curling up beneath the roots of an old tree. Upon seeing a living creature nearby, it started whining loudly, making its presence known to the whole area. The little one didn't yet understand that. Humans were the most dangerous beings on earth. Especially if they had firearms. But for Maximovna, there was no danger in sight. Instead, she saw a chance to help. She pulled the animal out of its hiding place placed it in a basket, and hurried home. At that moment, she didn't consider the potential implications of bringing a wolf cub into her home. For her, he was just a child, albeit a wolf cub. Her son nearly fainted when he saw who his mother had brought from the woods. Despite his pleas to take the wolf cub back, she remained firm. She believed in helping those in need especially the lesser creatures. Over time, the wolf cub was named Urigan, Hurricane. Because he dashed around the house like a madman. Knocking everything in his path. He ate as if he were three and grew rapidly. Not by days but by hours. In two years, Urigan had grown into a magnificent. Large, and powerful creature. During winter and summer. He lived in a spacious enclosure built for him in the yard. Whenever Maximovna rode her motorcycle to the neighboring village, Urigan often accompanied her to the edge of the forest, waiting there while she completed her errands. One early spring day, at the end of March, Maximovna embarked on her usual route to the neighboring village. Urigan, as always, saw her off to the forest's edge then stayed behind to await her return. However, this time, she encountered wolves blocking her path. The first emerged from the woods, followed by two more. The wolves stood close, staring at her with bared teeth. A shiver of cold ran down her spine, and she froze in terror. Maximovna couldn't shout for help. It felt as though someone had tightened their grip around her throat. Stifling her voice. The elderly woman realized she was bidding farewell to life. And the wolves closed in on her motorcycle. She revved the engine, but it didn't help much. The motorcycle was old, and the road was challenging. She couldn't count on high speed. Just as she thought it was the end. And mentally said her goodbyes to life. Urigan emerged from the forest with a fierce growl. Charging straight at the grey predators. He roared loudly and shook his head vigorously. The attack began, and Maximovna was unsure what to do. She couldn't help her friend. And he was ready to sacrifice himself for her. For her, it was her loyal companion. Lovingly devoted, like a wolf could love. In a brutal struggle, Urigan fought off the wolves. The woman was at a loss. Unable to assist her friend. He was willing to give his life for her for she had been his caring companion. Two days later, Maximovna couldn't get out of bed. Tears choked her. 
she couldn't forget the terrifying final moments of her pet's life. Images of the fierce battle kept haunting her. And she was burdened by an overwhelming sense of guilt. She realized that she would live. With this feeling of guilt for the rest of her days. Two days later, early in the morning. She heard a faint scratching at her door. Maximovna put on her fur coat and hurried to the yard. There lay Yurigan, wounded and covered in blood, but alive. How he managed to survive, no one would ever know. But that didn't matter now. She was determined to do everything in her power to ensure he survived. The girl ran from her mom to the bear. But what the bear did was appalling. It's impossible to understand the animal world, and any animal. From a midge to a buffalo, can understand that. But the lives of some carnivores are a mystery to us. And we can only guess how they lived. For example, wolves are animals to be feared. Feared, and respected. However, few people know that. Their attitude towards a person can be different. It depends on certain circumstances. For example, black bears are generally less aggressive and more tolerant of people. They usually live near human settlements. Whereas grizzlies prefer to stay away from human settlements. And are often extinct from populated areas. Black bears are excellent climbers. Three years ago. My beloved niece Lisa passed away. I didn't go to the funeral. I was just taken into the army. All I know is that my niece died of cardiac arrest. My older sister. Melissa, was a single mother out of wedlock. Lisa was born a healthy girl. Our parents thought their granddaughter was like this. So she grew up to be the cutest child. Always giving the impression of being in a good mood. And rarely getting sick. But at the age of three, Lisa was silent. She was completely silent. She stopped talking and started having nightmares. She often screamed and cried in her sleep. Without voicing her problems. As my brother James said, she had a feeling that her lips were sealed. Because Lisa had no reason to keep silent. My brother talked to the doctor and. They said maybe someone in the nursery had offended Lisa. Because kids at that age are so fragile. But the fact is that her mother abandoned her. So she was silenced by the pressure. James decided to take the girl to get close to nature for a rest. Maybe Lisa's situation will get better. Our grandfather lived near Cresnado and had been a ranger for 10 years. There is a very small village in the forest where he lives. There are only 12 houses in the village. Only 6 of which are usable. Grandfather himself lived in the forest. But he also had a private house in the village. So he gave that house to James and his daughter to rest in. But even after weeks of rest, Lisa didn't feel better. She still didn't sleep well and was reticent. And in the end, this is what happens on a walk in the forest. My grandfather found a badly injured bear cub. One of the animals bit him hard. James is a veterinarian. Which is why his grandfather brought him a bear cub for treatment. He said he didn't want to mess with him. Of course, my brother is a person who likes animals. And he knows how to find common ground with him. They brought the animal into the house. And he wasn't even afraid it was a predator. As the cub was so badly injured and exhausted. That he barely had the strength to move in two days. James helped the cub slowly limp to his feet and he was able to walk. Plus my brother really loves the bear. And it has had a positive effect on his daughter Lisa as well. She's become active. She smiled and even slept through the night. Without waking up or screaming. After a few more days. The results were still positive and the baby slept well. James decided to go to his daughter's room to see. If Lisa was actually sleeping soundly. Opening the door to the room. She was a little surprised that Gray was sitting on Lisa's feet on the bed. Staring intently at a spot on the wall that was what they named the bear. James thought Lisa had brought Brown to sleep in her room. 
but since he was a predator, her sister decided to take him out of the room and let him sleep in the hallway. But when she touched him, he growled softly. Startled by such insolence, James took him suddenly in his arms, carried him out into the corridor, laid him on the pillow, and decided to sit in the kitchen for a while and drink his tea again. At this moment, Gray entered the daughter's room again. But actually ten minutes later, she heard Brown's soft growl and approached him. He stood at the door of Lisa's room and growled. James opened the door, and Brown ran in. Jumped onto the bed. And got into the same position again. James and Lisa lived in the house for a year in total. Brown lives with them. And although he is an adult independent bear, he knows the forest like the back of his hand. He was also good at hunting. But every night he would come home. And spend the night in Lisa's room. He did the same thing every day. Sitting on the bed at her feet, staring at one spot. Growling every now and then. James didn't mind at all. Because after Brown started spending the night with Lisa. Her nightmares stopped. During this year. She became an ordinary child who could play. Laugh and sleep well. The only thing that wasn't right was that Lisa still didn't speak at the end. The older brother decided to return to a city closer to civilization. Her beloved job. Lisa feels great. Maybe she doesn't communicate enough. With the kids to worry about Brown. She knew that this was a very powerful beast. And that he could survive without her help. As soon as her sister returns to town. Lisa's nightmares return. She barely slept. The girl died within days. James is just beginning to understand. What it's like to watch a child die right in front of your eyes. The brother was completely desperate. He didn't know what to do. How to help his daughter. Lisa died four days after they arrived home. Words cannot describe what happened to James. For a long time he could not believe that his daughter was gone. It was as if the soul had left her body. My mom said that after Lisa died. She went to a woman who explained everything. And said that it was actually the strength that came to James. However, Lisa herself was unaware of her death. But when God saw something that wanted to destroy an innocent soul. He sent her a guardian angel. As we learn, Brown was protecting Lisa until she was taken. James is still blaming himself. He went back to the village to find that Brown still came to Lisa's room. Sat on her bed, and did not leave for the forest until morning. The bears couldn't stop wowing us. These photos show an adorable rescued brown bear. Fishing with his owner on a boat in Russia. A bear named Archie and Veronica Ditchka enjoy fishing together. In a forest lake in their hometown of Novosibirsk in southern Siberia. Veronica rescued Archie from a defunct safari park two years ago. And kept him as a pet. In one of the most Russian things to happen in Russia. A woman rescued a brown bear and ended up becoming its best friend. In fact, their friendship developed so fast. They even went fishing together. And there are photos to prove it. The Epic Times explained. How Veronica Ditchka of Novosibirsk. In southern Siberia took care of the brown bear. After the safari park where the bear lived closed down. Two years later, she and the brown bear. Now named Archie. Continue to have a strong bond. That not only keeps them close to each other. But also participates in very human activities together. Like boating and fishing on the lake. Now you're probably wondering. Why Veronica doesn't let Archie do his thing. And let him back into the Siberian landscape. Which is his birthright. It turns out there is good reason for this. We rescued him from a safari park. But we couldn't release him back into the wild. Because he had spent his entire life in captivity. She explained. Well, fine. This extraordinary friendship between man and bear seems unbelievable. 
The Daily Mail reports. The two have been photographed together. If not all photos and some videos. Sure, some of them feature two people fishing. But some are just posing in pure Russian snow. Additionally, the South African pointed out that. As expected, Veronica has her own TikTok page that. Showcases her adventures with Archie on full display. Veronica shared her story with the media. Archie spends every day with us and is madly in love with the water. When I take him to new places he absolutely loves it. We are like family. We share food and fall asleep in my arms when we are scared. Hiding behind me. We rescued him from a safari park. But we couldn't release him back into the wild. Because he's been in captivity his whole life. If their friendship isn't cute enough for you. I honestly don't know what is. I mean even I would never consider a wild bear. As a pet because I'm terrified. Honestly, I'm in awe of their friendship. Their connection left me with only one thought. If you don't harm or portray any danger to animals. They can't harm you. Unlike humans, they will only attack if they think you are a threat. A video shows off their quality time on the water. As the pair cherish each other's company just like any other friend. Veronica is cuddling your furry friend while they hold a fishing rod. The main reason is that bears are wild animals. And the concept of friendship is a human construct. There are so many cute videos online of men feeding wild bears. And playing with them. Seeing them with our human eyes and feelings. It's easy to call the kind of friendship we see. We bond with our domestic dogs as friendship. The fact that bears are very intelligent means. That they easily learn to associate people in general. Or people in particular with food. In fact, bears are not aggressive animals most of the time. And you have a recipe for cute videos. The problem is. Bears don't understand the human construct called friendship. And the same bear that feeds from. Your hand today could easily kill you tomorrow. Whether it's because the mother bear. Thinks you're endangering her cubs. Or because the bear goes into hibernation. And seeks out any food source it can find. The famous story of the grizzly man is a typical example. Timothy Treadwell claims he befriended wild grizzlies. And they spent days with him up close and personal. Until one day, both he and his girlfriend were killed and eaten by a bear. The story also features the main victim of these friendships, the bear. The bear who killed Timothy and his girlfriend was shot. Why were bears shot? The bear is just acting according to its natural instincts. But it seems to us that it has betrayed the trust of those who consider it a friend. We impose our human ideals on wild animals and then kill them when they don't conform to these human ideals. Give the bear space and love when necessary. In other words, don't constantly intrude on his or her space as you would with a normal pet. Or the bear could become territorial and attack violently. How amazing to see humans make friends with wild animals. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video on social networks. We will get back to you as soon as possible.